The self-declaration certificate. Some shrug at its mention, but many more shudder. On 3rd June, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, in compliance with the Supreme Court Directive, announced new features that would require a self-declaration certificate, or SDC, to be submitted by advertisers and ad agencies before the publication or broadcast of any ads. Ultimately, the aim of the order is to stop misleading advertising and protect the consumer. But there's a long way to go before we get anywhere close to achieving that. There was immense ambiguity and confusion surrounding the SDC and to help us understand the impact of such measures on the industry and the challenges for advertisers, agencies and media organizations, we have a panel of brand, legal and policy experts to unravel the complexities. Hello and welcome to Media Dialogues with Storyboard 18. I am Delshad Irani and today I have with me in the studio Gauri Gokhale, who is a partner at Nishit Desai Associates. She leads IP, technology, media and entertainment law practice for the international firm. We have with us Lloyd Mathias, business leader, investor, marketer and strategist who has led iconic brands like PepsiCo and HP. My next guest is Kazim Rizvi, who is an important voice in India's tech policy ecosystem and the founding director of The Dialogue, a public policy think tank. And my final panelist is Ahmad Aftab Nakhvi, a trailblazer in India's digital marketing industry and global CEO and co-founder of homegrown advertising network GoZoop Group. Hello and welcome to the studio, everyone. It's lovely to have you all here. So, Gauri, let me come to you first. Of course, uh, this SDC mechanism has caused quite a stir in the industry. If you could perhaps just dial back a little bit and, and give us the bullet points into what led to this point. Uh, of course, it was the SC order and then the MIB measures that were put in place. Uh, so what, what was it that got us to the SDC? Sure. So back in August 2022, uh, the you know there was a PIL filed uh, against the Patanjali advertisements right by Indian Medical Association. The allegation was that the ads of Patanjali essentially glorified Ayurveda versus allopathy, and there were certain misleading claims vis-a-vis uh, -vis the allopathic medicines. That's a short right. Mm -hmm. But when the when that conversation started before the Supreme Court, uh, from then to now. Uh, several developments have happened where the court found that maybe you know the ads were misleading some specific action points from Patanjali etc but the court because it's a Supreme Court ultimately went into you know sort of further to check whether the in entire Indian mechanism the law and the implementation against mi misleading advertisement whether it is sufficient mm -hmm. so when they were looking into this what they noticed of course you have the Consumer Protection Act you have the food laws you have the Drugs and Cosmetics Act, Drugs and Magic Remedies Act, all of that and the re relevant regulators. But when they were looking into the implementation, somewhere they felt that the implementation may not have been to the extent required. They also went against the state authorities who had not taken action, etc. But ultimately, the crux is they felt that the advertisers are not taking responsibility. And to bring that accountability on the table from the side of the advertisers and ad agencies, this self-declaration mechanism was put in place. So if you really see no new law in terms of compliance as to what is misleading or what food claim can be made, not made, the court is not getting there because the law is already stating uh, all of that, right. right? What it is calling for is an accountability where the advertiser or ad agency comes and says, that whatever I'm putting in my ad is in compliance with the law, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and, uh, you know, not misleading, mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. And then the second leg is when the publishers, whether it be newspapers or, uh, you know, uh, digital or television, when they're putting that ad on their platform, they have to just take that self-declaration. The order is, you know, slightly vague in that regard. Right. We'll discuss that. But there is a second level of accountability to just take, take it on record to say that yes you know the self declaration mm -hmm. has been made nothing more than that mm -hmm. right so this is the you know short journey of where we have landed right. and yeah. and to this all encompassing kind of sdc yeah. massive number of advertising let me just put some numbers out there so uh, before i get to my next question between january and december 2023 we had 3.4 billion digital ads 
We had 860 million TV ads. We had 1.3 million print ads. And these are, some would argue, conservative sort of figures because there are lots of other advertising. We're not taking into account influencer marketing, small and medium enterprises advertising in regional publications. And currently, as it stands, uh, an SDC is required for all advertising across sectors, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, a cousin, let me come to you next. Uh, given the enormity of this challenge, um, what do you make of such all-encompassing orders and you know the sort of broad brush strokes? Um, give me your you know initial thoughts to something like that, given your experience tracking of, of course, all these industries. If you look at the digital ads, particularly, you just spoke about 34 crore digital ads for last calendar year, right? So when it comes to compliance with the order, it's kind of impractical to, you know, make sure that you're able to have a self declaration for each and every ad, which, you know, advertisers and advertising agency are sort of coming up with, mm. right? That's number one. I think number two is around the order itself. And the fact of the matter is that we do have existing laws when it comes to prevention of misleading ads or false claims, etc. We have the ASCII guidelines, you have the uh, Consumer Protection Act, within which you have guidelines for prevention of misleading ads. I think the problem lies with the enforcement of these laws. Mm. I think that's where the Supreme Court also thought that, okay, we should come up with a procedure which will ensure that you know enforcement is happening. But I think the challenge is that this has turned the table upside down. And what we are seeing is that the volume is so high that it's nearly impractical or impossible to be able to comply with something like this. So what do we do? We have to make sure that the laws are enforced properly. The regulators are enforcing the laws effectively. Mm -hmm. Is this a right mechanism? I'm not sure. And that's something which is being debated. Right. That's number two. I think number three is around also the nature of the internet mm -hmm. and the nature of advertisements. And we are living in a world which is you're driven by AI. You have programmatic ads. You have different type of ads which are, you know, developed in real time. You have long campaigns mm -hmm. coming up with self declaration for each and every ad where the advertiser is saying, okay, I am mm -hmm. committing to the fact that this is not a misleading ad. You go and upload that on the portal and then the portal will give you an acknowledgement receipt. You take that receipt back to the publisher and only then can the ad be uploaded. Mm. Now over here, what is the guarantee that the ad is not misleading? Because this is a self declaration. So right. when it comes to effectiveness of mm -hmm. this order, of, of, of this issue as well, I think, you know, it's very easy to say, hey, uh, you know, this is an ad and I'm claiming that it's not misleading, mm. 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 right? So that's also a problem. Uh, so therefore, I think what we need to understand is, you know, there are certain high risk ads, which, uh, of course, have impact on consumers at large. Right. And then there are general ads, which, you know, uh, advertisers, advertising agencies are pushing mm. out. There are different kind of products and services yeah. and goods. Do you need to regulate the entire ecosystem mm -hmm. through the same? In this, with this measure specifically? Exactly, with the yeah. same measure. I think mm -hmm. that's a question we need to ask right. ourselves. Absolutely. A great point there. And because you mentioned, of course, the challenges for the digital advertiser and digital marketing specifically, given the volume and velocity of advertising that we're seeing in the space. Let me ask you, Emma, um, you know, you're leading a very large digital marketing agency company. Uh, what was your first reaction to something like this? I mean, I'm sure you have to deal with a long list of uh, laws as it is for all the work that you do. We had, uh, we even had semi crackdown on influencer marketing a while ago, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, this uh, this adds another layer, of course, for you. There are this talk about sort of the administrative burden of it. We are talking about the effectiveness of it. But just your quick sort of you know initial reaction to the SDC mechanism. But the problem has been there for some time. So also as advertising uh, part of the advertising industry, I think it's a good thing that today we all are talking about it and hopefully something good can be come, come out of it mm -hmm. in terms of implementation. Especially because in digital advertising, just the magnitude of ads is so much. And so much of it is real time, not just through programmatic, but also through moment marketing, right. on which today a lot of brands are being built. Mm -hmm. In fact, moment marketing has become the cornerstone strategy for a lot of leading brands today. And possibly the only unfair advantage in moment marketing is being the first. Right. Mm -hmm. 
also being creative, but being first is very important. And the way the process has been implemented, not just in terms of uploading, I think it dampens that creativity yeah. and that turnaround time mm. for that piece of content to go live. Also, there are concerns around when you upload that piece of content, especially for moment marketing or even for larger campaigns, what is the privacy available? Are there other people, other agencies, other competitors, other brands looking being, at the work? Looking at that, right. Right? So that's a big question mark when it comes to creative work mm -hmm. uh, being put out. So those are the concerns, possibly I would say around moment marketing, around programmatic, where you know we would not know which is a platform where the ad end copy is being displayed, or possibly using AI, how the adaptation through A/B testing of the creative copy is being rendered at different mm -hmm. platform. So it's impossible to furnish that detail on a portal before the ad campaign is being run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, I would like to add aspects like live uh, stream commerce, which is becoming more and more popular. Uh, you know, sometimes there are discussions which lead to, through user-generated questions, which lead to presenting a product or you know, or an influencer talking about a product, mm -hmm. which are not pre-planned. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a bit on the spot, mm -hmm. right? And that's the beauty of uh, you know marketing through these channels which cannot be implemented if there's a prior declaration for it. It will lose its charm right. and it would lose its effectiveness as well. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. While Kazim also mentioned the effectiveness of the overall uh, guardrails for this, you know, there is no post uploading, there's no monitoring, there's no pulling down an ad. At this point in time, let me zoom out a little bit and come to you, Lloyd, uh, given, you know, you've seen the industry evolve. You've led large brands like Pepsi and HP. Um, you're working with a lot of new age brands now. Uh, when it comes to sort of the laws and the regulations, uh, let me ask you a simple question. Uh -huh. Where does the onus lie? Where does, who is responsible finally for the cleanup? Have you seen more of a sense of responsibility on the advertiser side or you're seeing a lack of it given the complexities of the media landscape today, given the competit competitiveness of the market today? Digital advertising, we're talking about programmatic, we're talking about influencer, we're talking about meme marketing and, you know, content marketing. It's, it's super complex, uh -huh. right? Uh, so advertisers can, of course, sort of put their hands up and say, you know, we're doing our best. But uh, as you've seen uh, the evolution happen, uh, where do you think the onus lies? I think like in anything, the onus always lies on the brand owner and therefore the advertiser. Mm -hmm. I think there's no going away from that. I think that's something we have to come to accept. Right. I think in one level, the government is kind of, you know, put the onus of responsibility on advertisers who in turn have pushed it to the agencies. And at a second level, as Gauri explained, also put the onus in a sense on broadcasters and media owners, mm -hmm. saying you guys are the second level of defense. When the real issue actually isn't there, right? So the real problem is rogue advertisers who've yeah. made misleading claims and who've actually misled people, mm -hmm. which possibly triggered this whole exercise in the first place. And therefore, I think the onus has to shift in terms of how do you monitor rogue advertisers without creating a censorship issue, mm. right? So self-declaration has always been in place. I think that's good. I think the idea is how do you reinforce integrity and how do you penalize rogue advertisers? But what should happen is that if someone has been an offender, I think there has to be a method where he gets he or she gets penalized, mm. right? If you've deliberately made a false claim despite certification of which there are uh, regulations in place, do you get banned from media, so to speak. So no advertiser registered in this country can take your communication for a six month period. That, that will make yeah. advertisers far more cognizant about their responsibility to society. Mm. Right? And like I said, there'll always be rogue elements like there is in any society. But I think the issue that needs to be resolved is at that end. What we've really done is right now just complicated the whole issue. Mm. Right? At one level, we talk of the ease of doing business. I think this is just needlessly thrown open a can of worms. And large advertisers, to the point they've been making, will still get by. They'll push right. it to the agencies. They have the resources. I worry for small startups, early stage companies. On so your point about defenses, while we have the defenses and you're, when you're trying to put that in place, Gauri, let's talk about the enforcement part of it, which is the crux of the matter, right? There are existing laws, yeah. a gamut of laws across sectors 
different products, different brands all come into that. Um, you know, when, what's the way forward when it comes to enforcement? We know that the SDC in the current form is not a very viable option. There is, of course, uh, considerations being taken into account right now to simplify the process to, you know, have a sort of uh, one time upload of an SDC by a legal entity. Uh, there are, you know, other other sort of things that are taking into consideration to simplify and just make it easier and more sensible. One would one would say for uh, all stakeholders. But again, the broader question it all comes down to is enforcement. Um, so, what's the way forward after if we've crossed this barrier? Sure. So, I think uh, let's take a step back in terms of you know the point on enforcement will be effective only if there is awareness, number one. Awareness at advertiser level and awareness at the consumer level, right? When I say enforcement, there are multiple regulators. See, the problem today is you have a CCPA, which is a very good thing under the con new Consumer Protection Law of 2019, right. which we did, did not have a regulator. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if something is misleading or not, especially in the food and, you know, drugs and cosmetics, it's a very technical issue because I deal with, you know, some of these technical issues I know that CCPA may not necessarily have the wherewithal mm. to deal with that issue. So they will have to pass it on to the relevant ministry. And that is where the ball may drop because, you know, there are so many ministries, different ministries looking right. at these issues. So can you have like a centralized system where CCPA itself, but, you know, you have the relevant ministry sitting with them as an expert or something mm -hmm. and resolve that issue there and then rather than just, you know, passing it on. And I think that is one of the issues that the court may have realized that, somewhere the ball is being, being dropped, mm. right? So there it has to be, and I have seen that, right? Because you have state FDAs dealing with something at a state level, right? right? So because of these multiplicity of situations, I think that is where I feel the enforcement is somewhere lacking. Mm. And the last piece I would say is ASCII, which is playing its role. Uh, but there are situations where ASCII, you know, some so probably an advertiser may not listen to it, then they may escalate to the CCPA. They have an MOU in place and all of mm. that, right? So. This has to be this has more to teeth. Yeah, more teeth and as he said, you know, can there in, in only penalty or mm. something, is it sufficient? Or there can be like to say that okay, you cannot advertise for next two months mm. or something like that, right? The suspension. So those are the things. But honestly, in a digital space, they can go directly as a UGC content right. and still advertise. So right. I don't think it's going to be very difficult mm. to you know impose a ban or something. Uh, in a digital space, honestly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I think some of these modalities can be thought through. But the more important thing is, you know, different regulators together working, uh, yeah. especially on the high risk items. I'm not, I'm not going to pay so much attention on enforcement of a, you know, uh, maybe it was, you know, cotton, but not cotton mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that will ta be taken important. care of <laughs> through, uh, you know, your consumer complaints and things like that, right? right? right. right. Taking on from Gauri's point, one another problem is lack of capacity. Oh. lack of capacity of Indian regulators itself. And we've mm -hmm. seen this across different sectors and especially in the high risk categories, you need to put in a lot more resources along with awareness if we can build them some capacity at the state and the central level both. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that will be critical. And I think another... And a more sustainable approach. Exactly, more mm -hmm. sustainable approach. I do not think a sledgehammer approach will ever work. Mm -hmm. It will create more problems. You have to make sure that the regulator has that necessary capacity and understanding of the dynamic nature of internet. Oh. This is where I think we need also need to educate the regulators. There should be a conversation between advertisers, advertising agencies, regulators to say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, in the next two years, we are using AI to deal with these ads. We're coming up with new type of ads. They are more real time, topical in nature. Right. They could be misleading ads. Of mm -hmm. course, there are bad actors. Mm -hmm. So you need independent expertise as part of regulators also, which is mm -hmm. why I feel capacity, awareness and education mm. have to go hand in hand. Awareness of the public, but awareness of the government and regulators also. Uh, you know that the public, mm -hmm. uh, I think in this whole conversation, we've forgotten the public a little bit. Uh, you know, I mean, just what are their rights? More public awareness that is relevant to the consumer today. Yeah, I think a very important aspect is making consumers aware of their rights and protecting them against false claims, mm. right? And therefore, as a consumer, if I see something that seems flies in the face of reality, someone making a completely bizarre claim, I think the process of being able to escalate that and having action taken 
has to improve, mm. right? So I heard my co-panelists say two parts. I think one is a lot of the issues fall between the cracks, right? right? So the government possibly needs to have a single clearance window, mm -hmm. right? Different sectors, mm -hmm. right? Some are food and, food and cosmetics, some are uh, ingestible products, some are purely external products. Mm -hmm. But having a kind of single clearance window will help. Two is clearly, as Kazim said, the need to increase capacity, but there's a limitation, right? right? We're a nation of 1.4 billion. I mean, we can't have like a billion regulators. Mm. So I think the final onus has to be on advertisers to ensure that consumers are protected. But most importantly, I think it's this concept of being able to quickly penalize. If I make a false claim, I have to stand up, yeah. own up to it, and it has to have some penal mechanism. Yeah. Can I go off air for a month, for two months? Right, so this concept of naming and shaming, I think that's where the solution lies. Right now, unfortunately, it's very much, uh, you know, another level of bureaucracy, mm -hmm. right? And that just flies in the face of ease of doing business. I mean, it's a travesty, right? We're neither solving the problem, we're just adding a lot of paperwork. We're putting small advertisers in a disadvantage. The big guys will still survive, right. but it's going to add cost. Mm -hmm. And eventually the consumer is paying for it. But I would also love to add a point to what Lloyd and Gauri mentioned around enforcement. And we don't need to look very far, but look at the self-serve advertising platform, whether at Google, whether at Meta. And each of these platforms and many others have their own regulations as to what is right and what is wrong in their own definition. And if an advertiser crosses that, there is penalization in terms of getting blacklisted, mm. which is a very big deterrent because you lose your history, you lose your account history, you lose how the campaigns were performing earlier. Yeah. And, that, and because of that, you know, a lot of advertisers are more mindful to follow those regulations which are there for the platforms. Mm. So if similar mechanism to just ban, uh, you know, an advertiser could be enforced, mm -hmm. I think that will solve a lot of the problems that we're discussing. Yeah, as today. much as we don't like hearing the word ban, yeah. but <laughs> I think you have a point there. And your closing remarks on this, you know, because at the crux of the matter, we are talking about self-regulation. We're talking about regulation. Uh, what do you hope uh, we'll see in the coming months and years? I hope this whole process gets eased out, made more simpler. I hope the consumer is kept center space in the whole thing. And also we focus on making the ease of doing business. Don't discriminate between large and small advertisers because this is where the small advertiser is going to hurt the most. It'll hurt the most, yes. And I think lastly, like I always believe, is that until we're able to bring the focus on the few bad actors who are giving the whole industry a bad name, we'll always be kind of falling in loops trying to, you know, set the whole house on fire. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, uh, all my panelists. Uh, that's all the time we have today. But of course, this is a very long discussion. We'll have again in the future. Thank you so much for your time. It was Thank a pleasure you. chatting with you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.